Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, good evening, everyone. God bless you. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Glory to his name. Well, I'm going to, I'm here tonight, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit with you on intercessory prayer. Amen. Intercessory prayer. This is an area where I believe God is called, this is part of the ministry that God has called us to. Amen. I'm, I'm not saying that you all are called to this, to this area of ministry, but you could be. You never know. Unless you search the heart of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. But anyway, I just want to thank God for this, for today. Thank God for this time together. Amen. And I thank him for allowing us to come together and share. Glory to God. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would show yourself strong on our behalf. We are your people and the sheep of your pastors. We enter to your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, thank you for your grace, for your grace is sufficient, and your mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much. Father, I ask you that you will, uh, God, just show yourself strong today on behalf of the people. And as you said, you were, Father, they that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Let your word be a lamp to our feet, a light unto our path. Lead us and guide us into all truth and show us things to come. And Father, we thank you and we give you glory and praise for it in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. This is Intercessory Prayer Night, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little bit along the lines of prayer, amen, so that, you know, so that you can understand why prayer is so important. Amen. And then we're gonna we're gonna close it off by we're gonna start praying for start praying. Amen. But right now, just want to just share a little bit because I, I believe this is uh, this is good and accepted in the, in the sight of God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So now. We started. Uh, we started teach. We start. We, we we started back on this on this area of teaching uh, some time ago. Uh, we uh, we we did it for three years, three four years in a row, teaching on every Friday, every every last Friday of the month on intercessory prayer. Amen. Amen. But now we have a night of prayer every Friday night when we are in town. We have a night of prayer every Friday night when we're in town. And, uh, and right now I'm starting back to teach along this line again on intercessory prayer simply because it is a very powerful tool for the body of Christ and the church of God to, to grab a hold to and to begin to apply to their lives. God wants us to see who we are in him and how to use the word that he has given us. Amen. You see... Because the Bible said there is no, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ, in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Amen. So I want to just share something with you tonight, and I just hope that it that, that it ministers to you as well as it has ministered to me. Amen. Because I see Jesus interceded. Amen. Jesus interceded, and He told it just, and, and uh, we are we're no better than Him, so we need to be. Learning how to intercede as well. Amen. Interceding on behalf of someone else. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel first. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. Amen. Because this is something that I believe God has dealt with our hearts about. And look what it says. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. Amen. And then, it, and then it goes on to say, glory to God, that I should not destroy it. That I should not destroy it. He said, but I found none. God, 
I believe with all my heart, God is still looking for people, for men and women that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. In other words, don't be selfish in just praying for your family or praying for yourself and your family. Don't be selfish of taking this powerful tool that God has given us and thinking that it's only meant for, 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 for just a few. No, God, when God gave us this message to intercede, God applied it to the to countries. God applied it to, to, to the world. God applied it to a people that was that was ungodly. God applied it to people that was that was, that, that live a, 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 a hideous life. Amen. And I know if God if, and if God applied it to those type of people, God still is concerned about those people today. Because we live in a world that is so caught up in deviousness. Amen. We live in a world that is so caught up in darkness that the light is almost gone out in the church. Amen. So God is looking for someone that will make up the hedge and that will stand in the gap before him for the land that he should not destroy. Amen. He's looking for someone that will begin to pray for others. Even you may not even know him. But God is looking for someone that will begin to pray for others. His, his, his eyes searching throughout the earth. Amen. His eyes going back and forth throughout the earth, seeking whom he can show himself strong through. Will that be you today? Will God be able to use you today to show himself strong in you and through you on the behalf of the people of the land, the people of the world? Amen. So this is why it's so important that we understand what God is saying to us because we are, we're in a season, we're in a season that I believe that God is going to show himself strong on behalf of his people. And so I'm going to read this again. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, but I found none. In the Old Testament time, the wall work of a city uh, is, was the chief defense. Amen. It was the greatest defense. Amen. Because if they had a wall, then they had a gate. Amen. And only when the gate was open that people could go in and go out. But once the city come under attack, they first go against the wall. They, they first begin to try to break through the wall. Amen. So he said, I sought for a man to make up the hedge and stand in the gap. The wall was broken and there he's, God is looking for someone that will stand in the gap until they get the wall put back together. Amen. Until they can put the wall back together. Amen. So we see that God... It's not only looking for someone to make to 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 stand in the gap. He's looking for them. He's looking for builders, people that's going to rebuild the wall, rebuild the wall. Amen. The breach has been broken. Now God want to restore it. So He's looking for someone that's going to make up the edge. He's looking for someone that's going to stand in the gap. He's looking for someone that that is that is strong enough and bold enough and courageous enough to say, God. No matter what I have to go through right now, I will make up the hedge. I will stand in the gap. I will intercede on the behalf of those to whom you desire me to pray for. I will show myself faithful in this area. Amen. See, God is looking for someone that will show himself faithful, that will be bold and courageous. Amen. And, and, and just pray without ceasing. Amen. Remember when Jesus wanted to intercede, when Jesus prayed, he always set himself apart from everyone. And and, and, and and number of times he went up into the mountaintop, into the mountainside, and he prayed. Amen. Glory to God. So if he did, why can't we do it also? If he did it, why can't we do it also? Amen. So we see that the, the wall was one of the chief defense of the against the, the invasion. Amen. If a, if a city wall had been breached, it, it had been breached, it had, it had a breach in it. Amen. They had to they had to arm they had, they had to put armed men at that breach in order to keep the city safe or keep the people on the other side the wall safe. Amen. So God wants to keep you safe. So we need to start praying for those on the other side of the wall. Amen. Build the hedge. Amen. Build the hedge. Build the hedge. Amen. Make up the hedge. Stand in the gap. Before God, for the land, for the land, glory to God, so He will not destroy. Now that's a powerful, that's a powerful word, there. But you know what? 
he didn't hold back his word when it come to when it came to uh, Noah's day, did he? When the flood came, he didn't hold back. He he didn't change his mind when, when the when when the people didn't believe. They would not. They, they didn't believe Noah when he said oh, it, it's going to rain. They didn't believe. They, and, and then when Sodom and Gomorrah was in, was, was was going through all these changes, when Abraham was was was, was met had met with uh, the, the the three angels. Amen. Glory to God. Did God change his mind when Abraham began to intercede on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah? He got he talked them all the way down to ten. But yet. The city was destroyed. Why? Because he could not find 10 righteous in the city. Glory to God. But still, Abraham took it upon himself to intercede, to stand before God and to pray. Will you take it upon yourself and begin to pray for America? Will you take it upon yourself and begin to pray for uh, Ukraine, Russia? Will you take it upon yourself and begin to pray for Jerusalem, Israel? Amen. Will you take it upon yourself? Begin to pray for the, the countries around you. Uh, Pakistan. Afghanistan. China. Will you take it upon yourself? Begin to intercede for these countries. Amen. Because let me tell you something, folks. It is time that we begin to pray like never before. It is time we begin to pray like never before. Amen. I don't know about you. And I, and I can't tell you what to do. Nor will I even try. Amen. I, I can't tell you, nor will I try to tell you what to do. But my job is to blow the trumpet in Zion. My job is to sound the alarm. My job is to warn the people of the danger. Amen. Of the danger that is coming. Glory to God. Amen. And so when we, when we come together, when we come together, let us begin to intercede. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to seek the face of God. Amen. On behalf of others. Then we'll see the hand of God on our moving on our part. See, it's just like it's just like when you give, it's given back to you. When you started praying for others, God's gonna have people to start praying for you. When you start interceding for others, God's gonna have people start to intercede for you. Amen. You know, just this week. This week, uh, well, actually, it was just yesterday. I was at, uh, no, no, it was uh, on the on the 20th, 28th. On the 28th, I just uh, did a funeral out of town, amen. And uh, I love the family so much that I that I told them that I'm going to intercede for you guys three times a day for seven days. And I gave them all a prayer call, amen. They was they they was they, 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 they this family was dear to my heart. Amen. And I gave them all a prayer cloth. Amen. And, and then I told them I'm going to be praying for you three times a day. Nine in the morning, twelve at noon, and three in the evening. I'm doing the Daniel prayer and fasting while I'm, while I'm praying for this family for, for, for the next six more six more days after the day. Six more days now. Amen. And I'm going to do, I'm going to keep my word. Amen. I'm going to keep my word. Now, God kept, God's going to keep his word toward you. Amen. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy. And he said, but I found none. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe that God has called you to be an intercessory prayer warrior? Amen. Do you believe that God has called you to be an intercessory prayer warrior? And if so, then what is there to keep you from making up the hedge? What is there to keep you from standing in the gap before God for the land? Amen. God wants to do something so powerful in your life. God wants to bring you to a place in him where you thought was never possible. God is looking for intercessors right now. God is looking for a people right now. God is looking for someone that will say, God, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what I think about it, Amen. God, I'm going to be that watchman. I'm going to stand on the wall and I'm going to make up the hedge and I'm going to stand in the gap. God, if you need someone, here I am. Glory to God. You, you see, you got to be willing to give up of yourself. You got to be willing to give up of yourself to, to on the behalf of someone that is not equipped or you might say not able or don't know how to pray. Amen. And when we do, folks, when we do that, 
we it's, it's a sacrifice. And that's why I like I like this because he said in, in Romans chapter 12, verse number one, it said, I present my body to God as a living sacrifice. See, what am I doing when I'm interceding for someone? I'm presenting my body to God. I'm presenting myself to God on the behalf of someone else. I'm not concerned about me per se at this moment. I'm concerned about them or those whom God has placed upon my heart to, to pray for. If I'm praying for Russia, I'm going to pray for I'm going to pray for Russia. If I'm praying for Ukraine, I'm going to pray for Ukraine. If I'm praying for Jerusalem, I'm going to pray for Jerusalem. If I'm praying for America, I'm going to pray for America. If I'm going to pray for Afghanistan, I'm going to pray for Afghanistan. If I'm going to pray for Pakistan, I'm going to pray for Pakistan. If I'm going to pray for China, I'm going to pray for China. Whoever God prays upon my heart, I'm going to begin to stand in the gap. I'm going to begin to intercede. Why? Because this is the purpose that he has given us this calling. What calling? Well, you, if you look in the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, he said, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Amen? And you, did you hear that? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He said, You are a chosen generation. See, God has already chose you for this purpose. And you said, well, you know, I don't feel like God is calling me to be an intercessor. I got too much to do. I don't have time to sit down and pray for some people that I don't even know. How many people are so selfish than talking like that? How many people you know like that that are, that are so selfish and they're talking like that? Amen? When God is simply trying to show how much he loves you and how much he wants to care for you. And when you start praying for someone that you don't even know... You, you showing God your heart toward people because God has a heart toward people. And when you show God your heart toward people, you're going to see the heart of God is turned back toward you. Amen. Toward you. Why? Because God loved people. That's why he created us. He wanted someone to have fellowship with. He wanted someone he can talk to. Amen. Someone that would talk back to him. Amen. So when we come to God, we must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that digitally seek him. Amen. We need to be willing to sacrifice our time to pray for others. Amen. We need to, it, it, It's not something that we do by accident. It is something we do on purpose. This is something we do on purpose. Why? Because, you know, you, you may have loved ones that are hurting. You may have loved ones that are that are still running around in the world. And you might have a loved one that is uh, it, it, it pushing life to the to the limits. And and in a moment, their life could be taken from them. Why? Because of the lifestyle. Amen. And do you want your loved one to be caught without Christ in his heart or in her heart? Amen. Then when you start interceding for someone else, you're going you, you're gonna to cause God to put on someone's heart to start interceding for you and your family. Amen. You might say, well, pastor, I need prayer for my family right now. Then start praying for someone else's family. Amen. Start praying for someone else's family and you'll see that God would always have somebody praying for you. You won't even know it, but somebody's already, somebody already got you on their heart. God has already placed you on someone else's heart. Amen. He's already placed you on someone else's heart. Why? Because he knows that you need prayer. Why? Because you've already made it known to him. God, I need prayer. Amen. And, and then when you and when you and when you stop being so selfish and start praying for someone else, then God's gonna move on someone's heart. They're gonna start praying for you. Amen. They're gonna start praying for you. Now, I know that that sounds that sounds strange, but let me tell you something. I, I've seen it work before. I've seen it work before. Amen. Glory to God. I, God. God placed somebody on my heart and I started praying for him. Amen. Then next thing I know, I call, I call up a friend of mine and, and you know what he said? Well, you know what? God just had me praying for you today. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I believe it's all because I have been praying and interceding for someone else. Amen. And, 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 and he said, God had God just prays on my heart that I, you know, I've been praying for you today, and I and I pray that you, I pray that that every demonic force, everything that the enemy is, is caused to rise up against you, will 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 fall, and have no effect on you and your household. Amen. And I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So when you're praying for others, God is going to have someone praying for you. 
That's why he said, and I sought for a man among them. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy. And he said, but I found none. And he said, but I found none. Glory to God. And look at the last verse, verse number 31. Verse number 31 said, Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own ways, this is what he said now, their own ways, their own way have I recompensed upon their heads. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads. Amen. Said the Lord God. Glory to God. You see, now we don't want that, we don't want that to be our end. We don't want that to be our downfall. We want to be the one that is walking with God. We want to be the one that is hearing God. We want to be the one that is serving God. We want to be the one that is standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Amen. So now, now when I when I look at that, I, I think about I think about Daniel a whole, you know, when I'm when I'm praying, when I'm teaching on this, Daniel always comes to my heart. Amen. He always comes to my heart when I'm teaching along this line. Why? Because he's a, he because he he has set a great example. He has set a great example of an intercessor. Amen. Can we just turn the book of Daniel real quick? And I'm gonna look at uh book of Daniel. Amen. And I'm gonna look at chapter six. Book of Daniel, chapter six. Amen. And let's start reading verse number one. He said, And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom at 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. Amen. Which should be over the whole kingdom and and over them and over these three presidents of whom Daniel, now get this, of whom Daniel, <laughs> oh my God, of whom Daniel was first <laughs> now, Daniel, what 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 fascinated me so much about this passage of scripture? Because I see Daniel was a, a captive; he was a, a prisoner. He was not he was not one of the team. <laughs> he was not one of the the, the the countrymen. He was brought in in captivity into this country. Now, notice how God viewed Daniel. And why he viewed Daniel in such a way. See, Daniel was a man just like you and me. But Daniel was a praying man. He always prayed to God. What was he doing? He was interceding for his nation, for his people that have come into captivity. He prayed for his people daily. Because they had come into captivity. Amen. He kept them before God daily. Praying for them. Amen. Now look what God said. Now look what, now look what the Bible said about Daniel. Because of that perk, Because of that fact. It says right here in verse number 2. It says. And, and, over the, and, over these pres, and over these three presidents. Of whom Daniel was first. That the prince might give account unto them. And that the king should have no damage. Verse number three says, "Then what? Then this Daniel was preferred. You notice, notice how they put this now. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. Because an excellent spirit was in him." And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Now, <clears throat> if God can take a, a, a prisoner because of his <clears throat> prayer life and put him over the, the kingdom presidents and princes, don't you know that God, don't you believe that God can take you and 
and lift you above your circumstances, above your trials, above your tribulation, above your 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 mistakes, and set you in a place where God, where His Word will begin to override all the works of the enemy. God wants to do something so powerful in these last days, and He's looking for people that will make up the hedge. He's looking for people that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge and, and stand in the gap before him. He's looking for people that will not be selfish. He's looking for people that will not grow weary in well-doing because he said, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. Glory to God. God is looking for someone that will take up the cross and follow him. Will you be that one? Will you make up the hedge? Will you stand in the gap before the Lord on behalf of someone else? Amen. You see, I... I gave this. I, I gave my word to this to this family, and I'm going to be praying for them for the next seven days. Amen. And uh, at, at three times a day, I'm, I'm doing the Daniel prayer, and I'm going to pray the Daniel way of praying three times a day. Amen. For the next six days, I, today was the first day. That, it was seven days altogether. Today was the first day. Amen. And I'm going to do it for the next six days. Amen. But I'm not only going to pray for that family. During this time, I'm going to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem, for the, for the house of Israel. I'm going to be praying for America. I'm going to be praying for the leaders of, of America. I'm going to be praying for the leaders of Israel. Amen. I'm going to be praying for, for, for Pakistan. I'm going to be praying for Russia. I'm going to be praying for Ukraine. Amen. Because how many of you know that the enemy right now, the devil right now, is trying to set up their agenda and they're using and the enemy is using these two countries that's in war, that's in conflict with one another to to be, to, to get everybody's mind and eyes off of the things that, that he's doing behind the scene to keep them focused on this right here so that he can uh, get his agenda passed through the, 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 the courthouses without people noticing what's being done. Amen. Because you see, you think that's the big picture. That's not the big picture. There's things that happen behind the scenes that you don't even know about, that we don't even know about. Oh, shall I about call out about sin. And that's why it's so important, folks, that we begin to make up the hedge. We begin to stand in the gap. We begin to pray that all those that are in authority that make decisions over things that really matter to our countries, amen, that means Congress people, that means uh, legislators, that means uh, uh, parliament people, amen, so forth and so on, amen, that means, the, the, that means everyone that's in authority, kings and priests, kings and princes and, and whoever. Folks, we have to begin to humble ourselves. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Let me turn there real quick. I'm gonna leave my I'm gonna leave my page right here. I'm gonna leave my page right here in right here in in uh in, in, in uh Daniel because I gotta come back here in Daniel. But uh he just dropped this scripture in my heart, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. He just dropped this in my heart. And so I'm gonna we're gonna read this right here right now. Then we're going to go back over to the book of Daniel. Amen. We're going to read this, then we're going to go back to the book of Daniel. Amen. So notice what it says right here. Notice what it says right here because it says this is very important, folks. This is very important. And we don't we, we don't understand everything that was going on behind the scene. But we know that God is God is calling us to begin to pray for the things that has happened behind the scenes. Amen. You don't have to know what's going on. You just need to pray for those that 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 that, that is that is working behind the scenes. You need to just start praying for those people. Amen. And let God begin to do a work. 
Amen. See, what done in darkness can be can be can be can be brought to the light. Amen. What's what is done in darkness can be brought to the light. Glory to God. And so that's what we want to see come to pass. That's what we want to see God do. We want to see that what's happening in darkness come to the light. So he wants us to pray. But notice what he said in Colossians and in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And look at verse number. Verse number uh Verse number 12. Let's start reading verse number, verse number 11, I mean. Let's start reading right here, verse number 11. He said, Thus Solomon fashioned his house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in, the, and in his own house, he prosperously effected. Amen. Verse number 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy, listen to this now, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself. See, once you make up your heart, once you make up your mind, when you begin to, when you begin to pray unselfishly, amen, when you begin to sit in order, your surroundings so that you can set yourself apart to pray, God is going to put his seal on that place. He's going to put his seal, his signet on that place. Notice what he says right here. Verse number, verse number, verse number 12. Amen. He said, in verse number 12, he said, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. And the Lord, and the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Because that's what you're doing. When you start praying, when you start interceding for others, you are sacrificing something. Because see, you might, the time you start praying, you're going to start think, well, I need to be washing dishes. Or, or, or I need to go clean my car. Or I need to go finish building this part onto my house, what I've been, what I've been working on. See, the devil going to bring all kind of things to your attention to try to get you off of your purpose and off of your goal. Why? Because if he can stop you from praying, he can continue what he's doing in darkness. Amen. But the moment you begin to pray, the moment you begin to seek the face of God, the moment you begin to cry out on the behalf of others, those that are working behind the scenes in our governments, when you start praying effectively, you're, you're going to sacrifice some time. Because when you start praying... Uh, sometimes you, you won't be able to stop when you get caught up in the spirit. You, you won't be able to stop when you want to. Why? Because you're going to be so caught up in the spirit. You're not going to want to stop. You're going to want more. You're going to want to be in the presence of God more. And God's going to, I mean, you think he's going to run you out? No, he's not. He's going he's gonna to want you to stay as long as you want to stay. Because he enjoyed seeing his people crying out to him. Glory to God. Look at verse number 13. Look at what the verse says, verse number 13. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. See, all this stuff we've seen have already come to pass, and it's still happening. Amen. Now look at verse number 14. If my people, which are called by my name, he's talking about us. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn... There it is. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God wants to do something so powerful in our land right now, folks. God wants to do something so powerful in our land. But it's going to take you and I. It's going to take us coming together in the spirit of unity, in the spirit of one accord. We got to start. We, the body of Christ need to come together and start seeking God. <clears throat> start seeking the face of God. Amen. In, 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 in the spirit of one accord throughout the earth, it's time for the church throughout the earth to begin to come together and begin to seek the face of God. Begin to seek the face of God. And friend, let me tell you something. When we start crying out to God, when we start seeking the face of God, God is going to show up and he's going to show himself strong on our behalf. Why? Because we're praying for someone else. Now God is going to take notice of you and, and, and the things that's going on in your life. 
Why? Because he wants you to be protected. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to, to rest assured that he hear you. Amen. And when you know that he hears you, then you know you have the petition that you desire of him. Amen. When you know that he has heard you, then you know your prayer is answered. Your prayer is answered. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can y'all see that? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, when I when I when I come together, when I come when I come to this thing, when I understand what God said to me, I, I tell you what, it really it really just touched my touched my heart. It really just touched my heart. Amen. The Lord, the Lord, your the, the Lord, your word says, Lord, your word says, I can come boldly. Let's look at Hosea. Look at Hosea, excuse me, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrew 4, 16. Amen. Hebrew 4, 16. Glory to God. Oh, I'm telling you, this is this is powerful. You guys, you guys need to share this message. You need to share it. Amen. You need to share it. Hebrew chapter 4, verse number 16. And it reads, let us therefore come boldly. See, when we when we when we when we come in agreement in the spirit and we start praying, God gonna allow us to enter into his presence boldly. Notice what he said right here, verse uh, Hebrew chapter 4, verse number 16. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, glory to God, and find grace to help in a time of need. That we obtain mercy, find grace to help in the time of need. But what are we going to do when we come into his presence? Let's look at 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, amen. And notice what it said right here, 1 Timothy chapter 2. It said, I exalt therefore that first of all, supplication, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. See, God not just concerned about a few. God is concerned about all because, see, God created all. He created all in his image and out of his likeness. Folks, he's concerned about me. <laughs> and what he said, my righteousness is no more than just a filthy rag. But yet, he's concerned about me. Amen. He's concerned about me. Amen. So when I start interceding, when I start praying for others, guess what? God's going to put it on someone else's heart to start praying and interceding for me. In my family. Glory to God. <clears throat> and that's what it's all about, folks. Getting the mind of God. Look at, now back in 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse number 2. For, verse number 2 said, For kings, for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. See, when we come to the knowledge of the truth, we're saying, God, I see what your word says, but I don't understand it. And so now that I realize I don't understand what God is saying, I'm going to read it over and over. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to just, just dissect that word. I'm going to read it over and over and I'm going to, think about what I'm reading. I'm going to meditate on what I'm reading. And then, then what's going to happen? Then God's going to be revealing to my heart what he is saying right there in that word. He's going to be re revealing to my heart right there what he's saying in that word. See, the word of God, folks, the word of God is powerful and sharp than any two-edged sword. And as we take the word of God, and as we apply the word of God to our lives, amen, we'll see that, we'll see the hand of God working on our behalf to bring us to that place where we can see the kingdom of God manifests with power and with glory. Amen. With power and with glory. God wants to do something in these last days that's going to get the attention of the ungodly people of the world. And it's going to take you and me. We're going to have to start interceding. We're going to have to start praying. We're going to have to start seeking the face of God. We're going to have to start pushing ourselves away from the table every once in a while. And do it, take them, go on a little fast. Amen. So that you can... Bring, so you can bring your spirit under subjection 
Bring your body under subjection to your spirit because if you're not praying, if you're not fasting, your flesh is going to do everything it can to keep you from praying and fasting. Amen. From, from praying, from interceding. Because your flesh is, you might think, you might think, you might think that you could override that flesh. Let me tell you something. That flesh is a is a, is a, is a real hog. <laughs> I was saying your flesh is a real dog. <laughs> So, so when you're fasting and when you're praying, you can bring that flesh under subjection to your spirit. Amen. See, your flesh and your spirit, they're, they're enmity with one another. They're fighting against one another. Amen. And the stronger, the stronger one is going to win. That's why we're not praying. We're not fasting. We're not praying. That flesh is going to override our spirit. And we're going to find ourselves doing things that we really don't want to do. But we find ourselves doing them because our flesh is controlling us. And that's why God called us to pray. Because it's time for us to take control of the flesh instead of the flesh taking control of us. Amen. So we got to pray. We got to seek the face of God. We got to pray like never before. Amen. It's that season, folks. It's that time. It's that time and it's that season that we pray like never before. Amen. Glory to God. And I want you to all, I just want y'all to understand something here. Because you see, let's go back to the book of Daniel first. And I'm going, to, I'm going to bring, I'm going to show you this. In the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, and look at chapter, chapter 6 one more time. Book of Daniel, chapter 6. And notice what he said right here. Let's just read verse number 2 and a few other the scriptures right now. Daniel chapter 6. And it says, in verse number 2, because you see, Daniel, Daniel, he was, he was, he, he's a he's an outstanding prayer warrior, and now he's been set in position now over the over the over above over and above the people of the country, amen. That was right under the the king. Now Daniel's been set over them, amen. And they they very jealous of Daniel right now. They are very jealous of Daniel right now. But you see, they can't touch him because Daniel has a a, a prayer life that is so so powerful that God uses his enemies to bless him, to put him in a, in a position that they desire. And because they did not get it, they want to plot to destroy Daniel. They want to plot to destroy Daniel. But notice what he says right here in, in, in uh, Daniel chapter, chapter, chapter 6 and verse number, verse number 2 said, over these three presidents of whom Daniel was made whom Daniel was first and was and the, that, the, that the prince might give account to them and the king should give should have no damage. Verse number 3 Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Amen. Then the president said, and the president and the prince sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion, no fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. See, when you, when you are a praying person, when you are a praying person, it's going to be hard or difficult for you to, <clears throat> to do something that's going to grieve the Spirit of God. It's going to be hard for you to, 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 to do something that's going to cause you to be grieved within your own spirit. Amen? And when you do, you're going to quickly repent and turn away from it. You're not going to continue in it. Amen? And that's what, you see, Daniel, Daniel's lifestyle the people, they tried to find something against Daniel, and they could not find something against Daniel, so they came against what Daniel was doing. Amen. They came against his prayer life. Amen. They came against his prayer life. Not like they took prayer out of school. They, well, they couldn't find no way to, to stop us, so they start coming against, they start putting laws to try to make those laws stop us. Amen. So they, what they do, they put a law against praying in school, praying in public. They put a law against, against uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, coming, uh, coming together in the in the public, 
Amen. Other than inside of a church. Amen. So we have to we have to uh, understand how see that same that same devil that came against Daniel to try to stop him from praying is coming against the church trying to put the light of the church out today. And that's why God is looking for someone that'll make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Are you called to be an intercessor? Are you one of those that, that God has called to be an intercessor and you've not answered the call? Think about it. Think about it. Because if God called you, you've not answered, then folks, it's time for you to, it's time for you to, 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 to own up to your responsibility. Because God is looking for someone that will make up the hedge and stand in the gap before him for the land. Amen. But notice Daniel, they couldn't find no fault in Daniel because of his prayer life, because of his, because of his lifestyle with God. When you start spending time with God, it's going to, I'm telling you, it's going to begin to pure, it's going to begin to pure, purge you. It's going to begin to purify you because the more you pray, the, the more, the more close God is going to, is going to, is going to draw to you. Amen. The closer you're going to be drawn to God. And the closer you draw to God, the more the, 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 all of that stuff that's, 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 that's been, that's been attached to you that, is, that is trying to keep you in bondage or trying to keep you away from God, all those things are going to begin to fall off of you because, you see, when you come into the presence of God, you're, gonna, you're not going to bring all that garbage. <laughs> He's going to cause that to drop off in the outer court. <laughs> and then when you come to the inner court, you're going to be, you're going to be pretty much halfway clean. But then when you come into the Holy of Holies where God is, now you are in the place where there's absolute holy. You're in a place where it's absolute holy. And in that presence, glory to God. Every ungodly thing, everything that is ungodly, everything that is unholy, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to fall off. It's going to die right then, right there. Glory to God. That's why we have to understand what God, what God is calling us to intercede, to be an intercessor prayer. Intercessor prayer warrior. Why? Because he wants to purify us. He wants to clean us. He wants us, he wants us to be able to come into his presence at all times. At all times. Amen. In other words, God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. <laughs> Amen. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Glory to God. Now notice what the Bible says right here also in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Well, past we never read Ecclesiastes. Yeah, but let's read it today. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Amen. <clears throat> Now let's just start reading verse number one. Ecclesiastes chapter three. Let's begin reading verse number one. He said, To everything there is a time, for everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Amen. And I believe right now the purpose and the time that God is calling us to is to be is to be intercessors, to be prayer warriors. Amen. This is a time God is calling us to begin to make up the hedge and stand in the gap, amen, before him for the land so that he so that he would not destroy it, amen. But notice what it says, look what it says right here. Verse number two, a time, to, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, amen. A time to kill and a time to, to heal, a time to, to break down and a time to build up. Verse number four, a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stone and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Number Verse number six. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. Verse number seven. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent. A time to speak. Verse number eight. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And I believe we're in that time right now. It's time for peace. <laughs> it's time for peace, folks. It's time for peace. Glory to God. 
See, everything that we, everything that God has for us to understand and to do, there's, there's a time for it. And I, like I'm saying, I believe we're getting to that time right now for the church to begin to make up the hedge and stand in the gap for all those that are in authority and out in the governments around the world. Because there's about to be some things that are, that are going to take place right now, folks. Things that have been done behind the scenes. See, you think this war is all about destroying Ukraine. No, this war is, is just a, a, a big front for the big thing that's about to come into the earth. It's just a big front. It's trying to keep your attention off the things that really matters. It, uh, now, Ukraine really matters. That, that What's going on that really matters. But there's some things that's about to come out of the woodworks that's going to really blow your mind. And this is why God is saying to us, it is time for us to begin to pray for the leaders, for those that are in authority, for those that are working behind the scenes in our governments around the world. Around the world. Amen. Folks, we need to pray. We need to begin to pray like never before. And I believe that time is now. Glory to God. I believe that time is now. We cannot allow ourselves to be uh, uh, passive right now. We cannot allow ourselves to be passive right now. There's so much happening in the world. Amen. And God is looking for someone that will make up the hedge. God is looking for someone that will stand in the gap. God is looking for someone that will say, uh, Lord, if you need someone to pray, God, you can count on me. You can count on me. I'll pray. You need someone to make up the hedge, Lord, you can count on me. I'll make up the hedge. I'll stand again. I, I have built that breach. I have refilled. I have repaired the breach that's in the wall. Amen. God is looking for someone that would not be selfish. Someone that would not just pray for their little family. Amen. God is looking for someone that will pray for the families of the world. And folks, when you start doing that, when you stop being selfish, you're going to find out that God is not selfish neither. God is going to start, he's going to start take care of you. He's going to start watching over everything that's concerning you. Even before you pray, he's going to start answering it. Why? Because you are praying. You, you, have, you have showed yourself faithful. You have showed yourself uh, humble before him on the behalf of others. Glory to God. Amen. So what, what is stopping you from praying? What is stopping you from interceding? What is stopping you from, from making a pain? Is it, do you, it, it is you, are you like a lot of other people that say, man, I got a full plate right now. That's, I don't have time for nothing. I don't even have time to take my, my children to, to the park and spend time with them. Amen. So what, what is your, what's on your mind? What's, what is stopping you from being an intercessor? What is stopping you from, from, from praying on behalf of others? What is keeping you? What is your excuse? <laughs> Many people have excuses and they are, some excuses are, oh my God, they're so far-fetched. <laughs> But why make an excuse? Who able you to wake up this morning? Who able you to lay down last night? Who able you to put your clothes on? <laughs> Who able you to, 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 to put food on your table? Amen. If it had not been for the Lord, none of that would be happening. God has made all things well. And he's doing there all things well. Hallelujah. So friend, when we when we can come together, when we can come together and, and acknowledge what God is saying, what God is doing, we're saying, God, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what it looked like, I will do my part. I will make up the hedge and I will stand in the gap before you for the land that you should not destroy. God, I'll do my part. God, I thank you and I praise you for it. Hallelujah. Friend, I'm telling you right now, 
that you are in a good place and God knows exactly where you are. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, I believe that this is not a coincidence. This is not an accident for those that are listening to this message and for those that are going to share this message for others to hear it. Father, I believe that you are contacting our you 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 are contacting our spirit by your spirit, and you are putting us on red alert for such a time as this. And that as we take warning and begin to pray to seek your face, we're going to experience, Father, your grace, your mercy is extended not just to our family, but to the nations of the world. And as we begin to pray, as we begin to seek your face, God, even that which the enemy is trying to do behind the scenes, even the things that have been done in the dark, even those things that are done in secret places, God, you're going to begin to reveal them. You're going to begin to reveal it to the prophets, and the prophets is going to begin to declare what's being done, and then the people are going to begin to pray effectively. And your name will be glorified, Father, because the people started to pray. Because the people start to pray, Father, it's going to stir, the, the, the Spirit of God is going to be is going to be in the hover like it did in the beginning when God said, let there be light. Father, the light of the gospel, the light of the glory of God is going to begin to hover over the waters once again. And you're going to start a stirring, you're going to start a shaking, you're going to start a... a, a a, a, a revamp of the whole creation because, Father, when the people begin to pray, the earth is going to begin to shake like a drunk man. And everything that's in the earth is going to be shaken that can't be shaken. And your name will be glorified, Father, because we put our, our agendas aside. And we begin to take up your agenda. We begin to pray like never before. We begin to make up the hedge. We begin to stand in the gap for your people and for the land that you should not destroy. And now, Father, as we take a stand against the principalities and the powers and against the rules of the dark of this world and against the spiritual weakness in our places, God, we'll take stand. We'll take a stand over them, Father, with our whole armor on. We'll not stand naked, Father, but we'll put our whole armor on and we will take a stand. And having done all the stand, we will stand with our loins girded by with truth. We will have on that breastplate of righteousness and our feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And Father, we'll take the heaven of salvation. We'll put it on and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And Father, we're going to stand in faith. We're going to stand in faith. Nothing wavering, Lord God. And God, we're going to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with all manner of prayer and supplication, we're going to come boldly before the throne of grace. We may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God, we thank you for it. Now, Father, we bless your name. We glorify you, Father. Lord, your word is alive and healthy and healing to all our flesh. And we thank you, Lord God, that nothing that the enemy has planned will prosper in these last days. We thank you. We bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. 